Hi and welcome to another episode of Meet a Farmer where today you'll find us in southwest Queensland on a merino stud. I'm here with Nigel from Mount Ascot Merino Stud. Nigel, tell me about this property. We run sheep, sheep on all our country here at Mitchelland. So we sort of run about 120,000 acres all up between here and Kanamala. And this year we'll shear about between 15 and 16,000 sheep this year. Merino sheep. It's a lot of merino all, sheep. All, all, all merinos, all merinos. Sheep are suited to Western Queensland and they're a dual income. We've got our meat, our meat is a byproduct and we've got um, you know, wool and they're good for the country, very good. And we do a fair bit of cropping and the sheep are good for controlling weeds in the crop too sort of thing. So it's a good, good family operation, enough to keep us busy. Yeah. <laughs> What's your experience been with the Ecker? It's a great opportunity for you know, Country Meat City and um, you get out and, and the city people can see what our agricultural goes and we can go down and see, see what some city people do. And, yeah, I just think it's a great, great meeting point. Is the Ecker a good benchmark for where your product's at? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't think you can beat competition for any, any, any benchmarking. Yeah, yeah get out there and let, let it seen under the eye of a different judge or someone different see it. And even, even the, um, the city people can judge how our product looks to someone else's. It's just, just everyone, you get comments, get feedback and, and um, yeah, you might get a ribbon, you might not, but as long as you're, you put yourself in competition, as long as you're up that end of the line all the time and not down that end of the line, you know where, where you're standing. <laughs> and so it's quite important, I think, competition. Yeah, life's competition really, and I think you sort of got to cut in and, and work it, and it's good for our, our sheep and wool industry anyway. Nigel, tell me about what's right in front of us. Yeah, this is our life with wool. We grow merino wool. It's um, yeah, merino wool is the best wool in the world. And um, all those high fashion um, garments you like to wear, or the nice woolen woolen suits or nice woolen jumpers, this is where it comes from. It is so incredibly soft. Explain to me about the fibres of a wool. There's sort of there's good wool and there's um, pretty ordinary wool. And the wool we produce, we got sort of wool that's. Um, Good processing wool, like we like the, you know, the people can see the crimp definition in the wool, so you know to be able to see that crimp, we call it style. And it comes out in these little fibre, fibre bundles, little erect fibre bundles. Um, so it's very easy to process. And you want a long staple like we've got there, like that, that's, you know, that's 12 months wool, how long it is, there's probably 150 or 60 mils there, might be a little bit longer. But you, one of the main things is it's got to be soft. They're very heavy too, how much weight would be on one sheep. Well, it's probably 15 to 16 kilo in these these places you're looking at now. Might be a little bit more actually on these couple of rams, but when it gets wet, it gets wet, and when it's drought, they still oh, got to carry it'd that be weight around. Heavy when so, it gets wet. Yeah, so normal sheep in a paddock don't cut 15 to 16 kilo, but a lot of sheep are cutting that six to eight kilo, and you know they got to, they got to be able to walk and get around the paddock and forage. And when it's a drought, they've got to really really forage hard hard to get a feed. So it's um, yeah, so. The pretty amazing sheep and merino how it can, how it can survive and breed and grow wool and that's why it takes a lot of nutrition to be able to grow wool. You know, the wool industry in Australia has been around for you know, over a century now and um, genetically we've bred a lot of sheep that have, have changed the industry and they've um, grown more wool, more kilos of wool and better quality wool, that's a big thing, better quality wool and we're trying to breed wools like this that are white and bright that are resistant to fly. Um, fly, like years ago we used to have to use a lot of chemicals in our, in our um, wool growing operation we use very few chemicals now because we just bred wolves that are, can handle white rainfall and they don't when they get wet they don't smell so blowflies don't chase those sheep so it's all good what do you love so much about being a sheep farmer producing this producing this this is our our glamour side of it all to just produce an article like this at the end of the day you know you, you feed them and you and you grow them and you try to try to look after them but this is our harvest time in this big, big shed where this is where we call our harvest and so you shear the wool off and you see the quality of wool if you can get wool hitting the tables like that and go into big wool bales it's just yeah it, it's, a, it's a great thing it must make you proud seeing a yeah. table full of this sort of yeah, wool it does yeah and you get those big wool bins which are behind us you get them full of nice white crimpy wool it's just yeah it's quite yeah and you've got a team of people like the six shearers and heap of shed staff and press the press them into the big bales it's just just it's a nice time of the year once the sheep has been shorn, what's the process from here? Basically, once the sheep's shorn, the, the, the shearers shear it there. The, the fleece gets picked up by what's called a rouseabout. A rouseabout is someone that actually gets the wool off from the from once the shearer takes over and throws it on the table. Then the wool rollers are the people that go along and actually skirt the fleece. So 
the, all the dirty little frippy edges on the edges of the fleece gets taken off. Then you have a wool classer and he put the sorts it up into the different bins there of, of different quality wools. So he makes it class into different qualities. Then you have a presser that presses into the, in the big wool bales out the, look around the back with a big press, big white bales. And there's, there's sort of about 195 to 200 kilos we aim for in each one of them. So they're quite heavy. And then they just basically from here, it just goes on a truck basically to the wool store in Brisbane. As a consumer, how would I know what is Australian wool in a shop? The biggest thing you look for, if you want to buy good quality wool, is a wool logo, which is a sort of, you know, the circle, like three circles. It's a big thing, it's, it's pure, pure Australian wool, so it's the best insulator of the world. We love our product, <laughs> yeah. Flick, tell me what your role is here on the farm. Yeah, I do everything on the day-to-day -day, um, schedule. Get up in the morning, head out, mustering, um, jumping on the bike and checking waters, going around the paddock, um, sheet work in the yards. And yeah, that's, they're a pretty long day. We finish when it's well and truly dark, so. What do you love about it? Why are you here? Every day is different. You're never the same. It doesn't get boring. You're the primary product of the food and fibre and pretty exciting when you see end products on the shelves or in the shop so you know where it came from and that you were a part of that process. It must be nice working in a family business because there are a lot of you know big corporations but it must be nice having that family tie. It's good, we're always talking about new ideas and um, we've gone off and done different things so it's good to bring back different ideas and put them together and hopefully we can work together to keep growing the business and it's been a pretty good lifestyle and so much freedom um, that you always look forward to, especially being away, you're always looking forward to getting home and a bit of fresh air. Yeah, I could probably see myself always being on the land. This is a very, very big boy. This is one of your show sheep, is that right? Yeah, and this is our Pat, and um, yeah, he's our ram. We'll put him up for the um, show into the Queensland Ram of the Year in a couple of weeks' time. So yeah, he's um, basically, yeah, just under two-year-old now. So he's a big boy for his for his age, he's yeah, about 150 kilo, so he's a big boy, yeah. What goes into knowing that you have a show ram? Good, oh, good length of saddle and, and softness, beautiful. softness, and the style of that wool, the style. It's, um, yeah, the wool's gotta be white, white and bright and style, yeah. that's what I do. And yeah, just, that makes a good wool, so you gotta have a good wool on top of a good conformation. They gotta be able to walk, eat and breed, really. That's also, that's why they've got to be so correct on their feet and everything so they can get out and forage and, and, and reproduce and grow good wool at the same time. What awards have you guys won at the ECA? We send wool at exhibition every year and we've come out with Grand Champion Fleece numerous times, the Supreme Fleece at the exhibition. Um, yeah, we're very proud to, and, yeah, to have a, to win a competition like that, to get the Supreme Fleece at the exhibition. So um, yeah, and this fellow's fleece will be there next year, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully next why. year might be, the, might be the year for it again. You've got beautiful fleece. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed being out here in southwest Queensland with us and we'll catch you on the next episode of Meet a Farmer.